All right. So I, I want to tell a story. Um, and I would never talk about this story if I didn't have direct connection to this person and I just seen them make a post about the Donald Trump situation and say how it was staged and how fake it was and how they worked in theater and in theater you bite on the the blood pill and it splatters we're talking about Amanda Seals and what she said immediately after the Donald Trump assassinate assassination attempt that was more staged than a Tyler Perry production of Medea runs for president this was I believe done to try to show his strength counter to Biden's fragility If anybody has watched my channel, they know that I don't get into reactions. I don't do anything like for views, right? But I have a little connection with Amanda Seals. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to tell this story. In 2009, I had an idea for a TV show that I wanted to make. And I so wanted to have a TV show on MTV or BET. I wanted that life so bad. That would have validated me if I was able to get my show on MTV or BET. MTV2 was a, a thing too, or MTV University was also a thing. That was the that was my ultimate goal was to get my TV show on one of those networks, right? The concept of the TV show was two hosts, a male host and a female host, competed for who could give the best swag over. Not makeover, but swag over. Right. And at the time, it was circa Rock Aware, Sean John. It was these big box brands that you could go to Macy's and buy, and everybody was wearing these brands. But for me, I seen the smaller brands to be much cooler. So it was a website um, called Karma Loop that you could find these brands called they were casba brands right they were small brands that were super dope that nobody were rocking okay and i thought it would be dope to give swag overs in these different brands and uh thrift you know thrift or whatever just not what was going on different okay so these two hosts would go to different universities around the country and compete for who could give the best swag over okay that was the basis of the show and the show was called swag university now i had a dilemma right from the beginning because I never produced a show. I didn't know what I was doing at all. Um, I did research, I read, and then I threw myself into the fire, but still not knowing what I was doing. And I wanted to hire two hosts. The idea was a male celebrity host as a rapper maybe, I think at the time, like I wanted to maybe have Wiz Khalifa do it. Then a female host and it could switch, right? So it could be at Florida State, 
maybe it's Wiz Khalifa going against, at the time, Rashida. She was younger and cool, right? And they would compete who could give the best swag over. But then at UCLA, it could be two different people. But what I know I needed to do from my research is I needed to make a pilot to make this real, to show the format of the show and how it was going to look. Now, I would do that with as little as money as I could produce this pilot episode. And that's what we did. I was the male host and I was not a good male host. However, at this point, we're just trying to show the format and the idea of the show. Because once we sell it to MTV or BET, things are gonna change anyway. I would not be the host of the show, right? And then what I did is, a big part of making a TV show or a production is adding talent. So what I did for adding talent I added Amanda Seals, which at the time she went by Amanda Diva. I did that for a couple reasons. She uh, already worked with MTV. She already was a name per se, whereas she probably knew some people that she could call and say, hey, check out this show. It's new, we just did a pilot and you should meet with this guy. That was my thinking. So when I hired her to be the co-host, that's my thinking. But then also she lent, she lended a lot of credibility because of who she was. So those two things, but then it was a third thing. The third thing was she was really good at what she did. She's a really, really good host. Transparency. What I did is reach out to her through email, through her website. We worked out a deal. I think the per episode was $600 and then fly her in and pay for her hotel. She would stay one day. We would do the show, maybe eight hours. She would fly out the next day, right? So we did that the very first time for the pilot. And here's some of the pilot episode. You can watch it, right? And maybe I'll put that on YouTube so you can see how it looked. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Buffalo State and my name is Amanda Diva. And I'm Slim, the Swagspert. The Swagspert? We, we are the Swagspert. And today we are gonna be swagging out some students here at Buffalo State. So I'm gonna be chilling with Kadia. And I got the super task of swagging out and time. The super task. Anton, get ready because you're gonna get swag. Listen, listen, my swag gonna be better than this. No, my swag is gonna out swag you with such swaggerificness, it's gonna be crazy. Swag! Okay. Now, another part of the show is getting sponsors. So I believed if I went to MTV, I got the meet, just say, I got the meeting with MTV, but then I say, hey. I also have these sponsors attached. You don't have much responsibility with the production because some of these sponsors are going to underwrite some of the production costs in order to be integrated into the show. So that was my plan. So clothing brands, so those Casper brands, uh, Kodak was a company that actually sponsored and gave a check for $25,000 because they wanted to integrate their easy share cameras into the show. Vote for who gave the best swag over at swaguniversity.com. Obviously it's me. Whatever. <laughs> Let's start with these vintage shell toe Adidas. I wanna thank Swag University for giving me all this stuff. And they also gave me a Kodak M590 easy share camera. So I made segments integrating their cameras into the show locations um plato's closet they were a clothing store it was cool because you get they have all of these clothes and you can put together an outfit for a student right 
for whatever event that they had coming up. That's the part that I um, that I skipped. They were getting makeovers for, uh, I'm sorry, not makeovers. They were getting swagovers for different events that they had coming up. So it could be a first date. It could be a college, it could be an interview to a job. It could be anything, but they had to have an event that they were, you know, that they were getting swagovers for, right? And that's what the host would compete about. Okay. Um, now I can go back to the sponsors and things like that. So integrating the sponsors into the show, and that's how I was thinking we could get on MTV by already having these things in place, right? So me and Amanda Seals, and I had some friends, one guy, Charlie, he was uh, the cameraman, uh, another guy, Cash Costner, he was a camera person and also an editor. And then we went to Buffalo State uh, and, and got young people to almost make a story about them getting a swag over, right? So one guy was Anton and another girl was, uh, I can't remember her name. I can't remember her name. But what would happen in the show is the friends would nominate their friends because they have an event and the friends that are getting nominated have no swag. So they would send in these videos, hey, my friend such and such is going on a first date, but she has no swag. Diva, come, we need you. So it was like an audition that they were that they were going to be sending in from all of these universities in order to get on to the show of Swag University, receive the swag over and these cool things or whatever. Same thing for the guys. The guy would be like, hey, I got this friend. Yo, he's grizzly. Like, you know, he never gets a haircut. He wears the same shoes every day. He wears a white t-shirt every single day and is dingy. Yo, the swag spurts, that's what we called them. The swag spurts, come come and swag up my homie for this event right so first episode success the pilot episode success now did i get what i wanted no i did not get what i wanted i was just meeting amanda seals and we had to establish a rapport right we had to establish a rapport and she was very good but she was very hard on me being a producer, not knowing what I was doing, okay? <laughs> and I took that because I took that as a challenge. Hey, you work professionally, maybe this is how it is. So I had no problem with it, okay? My um, interaction with Amanda was good. She was, she was super cool and she was very, very good at what she did. So now that we have this pilot, now I can go out and get um more sponsors and show them and that's what i did i went out got a mall to give us money i got plato's closet to give us money i got you lace to give us money i got uh a barbershop salon to give us money because in every episode they would get haircuts and get their hair done or whatever um so i got all these people to give us money now i have a little bit of a budget right i have a little bit of, bu of a budget and i call amanda back again hey let's do another episode now the plan is to self-fund it and do the episodes and then maybe sell the licensing or whatever, right? So she comes, we do another episode. It went well. It went well. We put this episode together. Now we have a rapport and I'm asking her, hey, what about um, mention this to some people in MTV or whatever? Uh, it, that didn't happen. That never happened. That never happened. But we did another episode. And this was the last episode we did. Now, at this point, if you don't know anything about production, production, you think is going to be one cost, but then it turns out to be another cost, right? So at this last episode, we're run, we virtually have ran out of money, basically. So she comes, put her in the hotel. Problem this time was that she didn't approve of the hotel 
and then she leaves we you know we have the episode and everything we do the episode and everything she leaves i did not have the money to pay her right so she's at yo where's where's the money where's the money where's the money where's the money we kind of lose contact it was like i said it was 600 bucks the person that i am i never forgot about it i got down bad on my luck or whatever it happens in business that show never got sold nothing never happened with you know with the show what we did is we took the episodes and we sold advertisement in the new york area and put the show and aired the show on tv and barely made a profit really but we aired a show on television right that was an accomplishment for me as a starting producer that wanted to be in this world of making a tv show making movies or being hollywood basically years later i you know i see amanda seal start blowing up she starts blowing up she's on uh insecure hbo show man that's crazy i used to work with her seeing her on the view that's crazy i used to work with her i know her and then i start seeing these different takes that she has on different things i think the moral of this story is you may think that you want something so bad and it's a reason why you don't get that thing right i never belonged in hollywood making shows i never belonged doing that I belonged doing what I'm doing now, right? And I'm so happy that that didn't happen for me. You know, I'm so happy about that because I can never see myself being one of these people that's in Hollywood that is so pro Democrat. And I'm not saying I'm either, okay? Because I don't, I, 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 I look at, what benefits me and my family and what's right and it wasn't right for amanda seals to make that video saying that that assassination attempt was staged especially when it just happened that was negligence and she has over a million followers and Dio Hewley, the same thing. And I don't know him, so that's why I won't talk on him. But I had interaction with her. And my interaction with her was good. And for people to be in that world and just are so gun ho I hate this guy. I hate this guy so much that they will say things like, yo, a stage just to get their people riled up and on their side. And that's the problem with America. It's just a huge divide. Um, but I wanted to share that story. I think it was negligence for Amanda to, to do that. I firmly disagree. At least, at least if you're going to say that, at least if you're going to have that opinion, at least let everything play out for some time and then put together your analysis and come on and say, yo, that's bullshit, it's staged. This is the reason it's staged. Not immediately after because you worked in theater and you know that you chew on a pellet and blood comes out. So he did the same thing. This is a complete uh, performance. Not good, not good. And that's why we continue to be divided in the country. One of the reasons why I currently live in Cartagena, Colombia, and that's the end of this video. Peace.